So there have been varied reactions to the Minister of Communications push for profits made from mobile money transactions to be taxed. Now, like I mentioned earlier on, George Jackson is in the studio to help me have a conversation around this. Thank you, sir, for joining us. Good to be on your platform. Thank you. So the Minister of Communication is pushing for um, taxation of the profits that these telcos make on mobile money. Is it something we should be looking at? Well, first of all, um, let's be clear. The profits that the telcos make, they are paying corporate tax. It's not like they don't pay any tax at all. Mm. So if she's talking about char charging them extra tax, then it is something over and above what regular corporates pay. And, uh, and, that, and that is the question we should be asking. Mm. Remember, mobile money has been of extreme value to this country. Extreme utility value. It has dramatically changed our landscape. And some people may even say, dare say, that mobile money has pushed up our GDP by a few basis points mm. because of its effect and the ease of doing business, etc. So now let's, let's, let's step back. Also, bear in mind that mobile money is cheaper per city than undertaking a transaction with your card. Yeah. Right? Mobile money is cheaper than undertaking a transaction with your card. Now, all that feeds into, say, if you start to tax them, how is that tax going to feed back to us as mobile money users? Mm. And remember that mobile money, the heaviest use of mobile money is at the bottom of the pyramid. So, uh, instinctively, I would say, Honorable Minister, Minister. <laughs> stay away from the mobile money mm. issues. She's, she's actually my mate from uh, Legon. Okay. So, I'm going to say, and, and I know her very well, Esla, please, I beg, don't, don't go there. <laughs> don't go there. Don't go there. That's my reaction. Don't go there. Mm. Uh, mobile money is used at the bottom of the pyramid. Already, at the bottom, mobile money, even though we know it's cheaper than using your card, it's still the fees, they, they, they cry about the fees because the monies they are, they are holding are small. Don't touch that. Mm. If, you want, if you want more corporate taxes, fine. They are, they, 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 we, uh, uh, Bank of Ghana is now overseeing Momo transactions yeah. and overseeing them. Leave them alone. Mm. Uh, don't touch that part. Go after the telcos uh, for other bits of their uh, operations, yes. if you like. In any case, what's left? There's extra tax when I talk, there's extra tax when I do Facebook. Now, mobile money too small, you please don't go there. So the, there's the, the bit of there. the argument that says that if the minister goes ahead to impose a tax, then these telcos will find a way and pass it on to the consumer. But, but, but are you surprised? They are not charity organizations. The question we should ask the minister is that, how are you going to make sure that this, these taxes are not passed on? Mm. That's the question. And you see, let's bear in mind, the mobile money companies have done quite a lot of good. Now, in, in all through this process, through Bank of Ghana, now they're paying you a little bit of uh, uh, interest on your deposits that they're holding. Let's not go in there and, and distort that market. That market is required for the growth of this country. That market is required to push this whole fintech agenda. Yeah. That market is required to create new business models and to provide employment, not for... Listen, and it's, it's a tax that, that hits the poorest hardest. Please, don't do that. Mm. So talking about revenue, government is projecting 67.1 billion as its revenue target for 2020. We know we have issues with achieving previous revenue targets. Are we likely to achieve this one this year, especially when the new budget did not introduce any new taxes? You want a simple answer? No. Mm. We are not likely to. <laughs> The simple answer is no. You see, we were looking for the budget. You see, okay. as for the issues they raised on how they're going to generate more taxes. Domestic revenue. When I was listening to the minister, there was a sense of deja vu. I was wondering whether, am I listening to the 2017 budget, the 2018 budget, the 2019 budget, or 2020 budget? Sentences. Because you know what? The same things are said, and yet, it doesn't work. And, 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 and I dare say, right, that there is nothing new that is being said today that leads us to believe 
that these targets will be easier achieved than the previous ones which were missed. And not achieving those targets has serious implications. Remember that the minister, for example, said that we borrow and he will continue borrowing or, 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 or we only borrow when we need. There's a small danger in that logic, mm. which is that it's easy. I will tell you that the U.S. owes has borrowed 110% of its GDP. So if Ghana has borrowed 60% of its, of its GDP, it sounds like, oh, but Ghana can borrow some more. There's a little catch. The U.S. spends only between 6 and 8% of its revenue in servicing that debt. Ghana spends up to 40% of its revenue in servicing that debt. That's a big difference. Yeah. So unless you increase revenue, our actual ability to borrow is even severely limited. And that's because we keep borrowing when it's limited. So what happens? Those who learn to ask, ask for higher and higher rates of interest, yeah. which even deepens the hole we are in. So we've got to we'll have to take with, a second look at the Oh, yes, the, and, and, the and, and there are some things we, we should have, I was listening out for that I didn't hear. Property taxes. Okay. Why are there not, why are we, why is there not a concerted effort to collect property taxes? Why is it that still three years after we, we've started, somebody can bring in 10 containers a month through the port and turn around to GRA and declare five containers? Mm. There's still no integration between those two systems. So you can get away with a lot. We are, uh, our property systems are still in silos. The, they are computerized, but they are working in silos. Yeah. Then finally, please, when you regi register any asset, tell me how much tax you've paid. It's in the law already. It's not just being implemented. It's OK to give everybody a tin. Mm. But mm. what is the thing being used for? When you go and register a piece of land, show the tax you've paid. Okay. When you go and register a company, show the tax you've paid. Obviously, when you go and register a car, show the tax you've paid. Obviously, there's a lot more we need to look at. But before I let you go, there's also the talk about listing the ECG on the stock exchange. We know the stock exchange has had its own issues this year. And now we're talking about putting ECG, which also has its own issues on the exchange. Do you think it's something we should consider, we should be looking at? we definitely should look at that. Okay. The reason being that ECG actually has a particularly good fit for the way our stock exchange runs now. Okay. Our stock exchange is there's, it's, for, it's really working in the way in which people who are not looking for growth but are looking for uh, 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 dividends, right? Those are the people who are on that stock exchange, not growth companies. Now, a utility like ECG is actually not about to grow dramatically, mm. but it has the cash flow to pay a regular dividend. Mm. So there is actually, when you think about this, there is actually a fairly good fit between how our stock exchange operates re in reality and ECG. So it's an idea that is worthy of, 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 of examination. All right, Jackson, thank you very much for speaking with us. Joe Jackson is Director of Business Development at Delex Finance. This is Media Live on TV3 for